Life and death are two beliefs, but one brings health, knowledge, and happiness, and the other disease, error, and misery. Each state is called our knowledge. To believe in one is to exist in it, for our life is in our belief. A belief in one is, of course, a disbelief in the other, for it is impossible to entertain two contrary beliefs at the same time. Death, therefore, is the destruction of the one for the time in which the belief prevails and the life of the other. Christ came to destroy both beliefs and to bring to light immortality. He that loseth his life for my sake, he said, shall find it. It was not meant by this that one should find the same life, which is ignorance, but a higher life, which is science. And upon this rock or science they build their faith, and the gates of death shall not prevail against it. Now your life is in your belief, and you are known by its fruits. My life is also in my belief, and by its fruits I am known. But your belief is based in ignorance, mine on wisdom. Now as I impart my belief to you, it becomes your life. It gradually grows in you to a belief, and this is your health and happiness. There are three states in which a person may exist, ignorance, error, and wisdom. Life is ignorance, death is error, while wisdom is a knowledge of them both. It is evident that in this piece the word life is used in two different senses. Life implies death and, strictly speaking, cannot be applied to what is eternal. Health, knowledge, and happiness means here mere ignorance, those with life. Christ, the truth, must destroy and bring in their place wisdom. The word knowledge applied to both states, life and death, means simply the knowledge of this world, opinions, etc. It is simply ignorance, but as it is used here, it is an ignorance that accompanies the happiness of which he speaks. This piece refers to those who are saved not from sins, but in them, to those ignorantly well, not intelligently so. He does not in this cure the sick and impart the science, but leaves them like children.